The Eastern Conference Finals have arrived on the mean streets of Milwaukee. <laughs> the Toronto Raptors and the Milwaukee Bucks playing game one a half hour from now at brand new Fiserv Forum. Better than 17,500 will be inside. We got about 2,000 out here. Which is practice. about what we have out here. <laughs> Sounds good, too. In the Deer District. They are, they are wow. four wins away oh from God. the NBA Finals. <laughs> Wait, the, the dog is killing me. Eight wins away from the ultimate prize. Oh, my God. This is awesome. Ernie, they got, a, they got a dog up there. Ernie, they got a dog in the crowd. Making noise. <laughs> it's not a dog, man. It is a beautiful spring night. It's actually nice out here. It is. Are you not entertained, Milwaukee? <laughs> Are you not entertained? This is great. I'll tell you what. Man, they crack. We, we welcome you to TNT NBA tip-off. It's presented by Auto Trader. That's Shaq. That's Kenny. That's Charles. I'm Ernie. This is my hometown. Shout out, Wauwatosa. Ernie, give us shout outs. Oh <laughs> shout out North 68th Street. Oh! Hey, hey Ernie, don't hey, be throwing up signs hey, now. Kenny. Don't be throwing no signs up in here. Hey, Kenny. <laughs> it's the nicest car we ever had, right? I think it is. Go on, oh, Kenny. Ernie getting the Ernie. Oh, my goodness. I love it. I love it. Go on, Kenny. Hey. Ernie, before we get started, we got to make sure this crowd is really live. Ready? Throw your hands in the air hey. and wave them like you just don't care. Let me hear you say it, Milwaukee. St. Milwaukee, St. Bucks, St. Bucks. Okay, okay. All right, all right. They ready? So, uh, it has been a week since the Bucks played. That's when they punched their ticket to the Eastern Conference Finals. Meantime, Toronto, uh, with the memory still very fresh in their minds of what happened Sunday, the shot. Whatever play he drove up, I'm about to get to my spot and, and shoot it with confidence. It's off the Leonard, defended by Simmons. Is this the dagger? He's an incredible player. We know it. Y'all know it. Ain't too much more you can say about it. It was cool. It was all the fans, team, everybody around. It was crazy. It was one of the moments where you just, it was like a real life game winner. Game seven, they counted down when you back in, back home and uh, everyone was celebrating like that. It was, it was a pretty awesome moment. An unforgettable shot, and this also an unforgettable shot from Rick Madonic of the Toronto Star. Who is that Look, dude in the picture with uh, he, he's he, the, he made it. You know who it is? Oh, he on the team. Jordan Lloyd, who played 12 games this year, scored 29 points, went Jordan to Furman, made the picture. and Look he at, made that, the picture. Look at him beat, hoping the, it doesn't go. That's one, one of the greatest suspended. photos ever right there. Yeah. Yeah. He suspended, Chuck. He crossed that line. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know what? He wasn't on the active roster anyway. Right? That's what's that, great. That's a great picture. No, he was That's just as excited. Ernie, Ernie give a as shout out to the, the, Give a shout out again. What's that photographer's name? Rick Madonic. That's awesome, brother. Yeah, that is tremendous. Hey, Marv Albert's going to be calling this game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. Reggie Miller, Chris Weber with him and working the sidelines. Kristen Ledlow, who was standing by inside Pfizer Forum. Kristen. Ernie, I sat down with Kawhi Leonard earlier today. I did ask him about that photo, asked if he would frame it. He laughed and said, there's a lot of photos, but probably. Either way, I asked him about the shot, those bounces that I think to all of us felt like they took somewhere between 30 seconds and 30 years. He said that they felt like they took the two seconds they actually took, but he was waiting for that second bounce to see whether it came off the rim, hard or soft. And once he saw it hit the back of the rim, he thought he had a pretty good shot at it. Kawhi and I also talked about this unique opportunity to slow down, perhaps shut down Giannis Antetokounmpo. Here's what he had to say. It's not gonna take one guy, you know what I mean? You got, it gotta be a whole team concept, not showing lanes or gaps and, you know, then it just not just, doesn't just end with him. They got guys over there making shots. Um, you know, Chris Middleton's all-star player as well. 
making shots for him, uh, playing defense on the other end. So, you know, he's leading them. Uh, he's doing a great job. Obviously, you have to try to slow him down first, but um, that doesn't mean you're going to win the game. Kawhi went on to tell me that the key to this team's success is that everybody just wants to win. Nobody's worried about personal goals, but the team's accomplishment, and that is why this Raptors team is in the Eastern Conference Finals. Ernie. Thank you very much, Kristen. Probably can be echoed on the Milwaukee side of thing the way you've seen the Bucks play out this season, too. Uh, Chuck, what does this series come down to in your mind? Uh, uh, can uh, Kawhi get any help? Plain and simple. I think the Milwaukee Bucks have a better supporting cast, even though I love Toronto. But those guys did not show up in game seven against Philly. They're going to have to play their bench, who I've been bragging on their bench for two years, got to give Kawhi some help. Kawhi's going to do his thing. Giannis going to do his thing also. It's, to me, it's going to be about the supporting cast. That's why I have the Bucks taking this thing. But that's the key to a Toronto. Get some help from anybody. I want to show you a couple of numbers on here. Offensively and defensively, the, the route that these teams have taken to the Eastern Conference Finals. Milwaukee, it's all been about offense. They, they play good defense also, but they're scoring 117 and have scored at least 100 in eight of their nine games. Toronto, meantime, allowing 96 and have allowed under 100 in nine of their 12 games. They're eight and one when they hold teams under 100. So who wins the battle of wills, Kenny? Uh, offense versus defense in this series. Well, I, I would say that the one thing that you would say in the Eastern Conference, that Milwaukee had the advantage to me over most teams. If they had more possessions, they had more talent. And so the game would, they would win the possession game and speeding up the tempo. I'm not sure if they have more talent to do that against Toronto. But I do think home court advantage will be the difference because the teams are so evenly matched. I'm not sure of not starting this series in the north and starting it in your hometown, the mean streets. And I think that will be the difference in this series. I like what you're saying, Kenny, but you know, Chuck knows. You give me a team that's playing well together, I'll beat town the guys anytime. Chuck makes a great point. Ever since we talked about Siakam being, being the number two guy, he hasn't showed up in game four or five. Since six, the injury. So, yeah, since, since the, the injury. injury. He hasn't showed up. So I, I like Milwaukee. I like how they play. I like their support cast. And Middleton and Bledsoe have to play well for them to get to the next round. And let me say one thing, Ernie. That's a perfect example why I don't like analytics of time. You can make those stats show whatever you want to. Let me tell you, they ain't never going to hold this Buck team on 100 points. You go back and look at Toronto. They play, The two teams they have played, uh, Orlando Magic, uh, they're a young team, very inexperienced, got a bright future. And the Philadelphia 76ers, number one, and B didn't play in a couple of those games. Ben Simmons is flawed because he don't know how to shoot the ball. So those numbers, they're not going to hold the Milwaukee Bucks under 100 in any game, in my opinion. So that's, you can make those numbers say what you want to. That was just the numbers from the playoffs so far. And, uh, and again, I respect that opinion that, look, this Milwaukee team, you're really going to have to do something to hold them under 100 points. Yes. It has not, well, been, it has not been happening. And, and you can't do it. There's Malcolm Brogdon. You saw he came back in the last game of That's the previous big. series. And uh, they are getting set to take the floor here at Fiserv Forum. And uh, we are getting set to be served. Uh oh. Uh, they got some great grub inside Fiserv Forum with executive, senior executive hey, chef where Kenneth where you going? Hardiman. Well, you can come say hello, brothers. Yeah. Hey, how you Thank doing, y'all. We've Kenneth? got. Hey, Kenneth. David. How you doing, Kenneth? We David. got the Milwaukee. You, man. We got the Milwaukee. Turn that way, by camera. Clemens. Get on camera. What's up, get Kenneth? We got the Happy Chicken by Dan Dan. We got oh, pretzels nice. with cheese sauce. Damn. By the Milwaukee Pretzel Company. Wow. Pork belly burnt ends by Iron Great Barbecue and classic mac and cheese by Mac Shack. Man. All of that uh, to be devoured by thank Shaquille O'Neal in the next Hey, thank you guys, Park. man. Yeah. Thank you guys very much. We appreciate, appreciate the hospitality. Yes, sir. Hey, guys, and we know that food was good, but Ernie, we got a better treat. Tell them. Oh, yeah. I mean, when you have royalty coming on the set next, Oscar Robertson will join us here as you see the Milwaukee Bucks take the floor inside. A guy who was here for the only championship for the Milwaukee Bucks. There he is, the big O, joins us next here on TNT NBA Tip Off, presented by Auto Trader. East, get ready to meet, including a guy who's been exactly that and then some. 
as much if not more than Masai and company could have asked for in T.O. Now the Raptors are going to try and steal a game one in Milwaukee, but not the only star. There's that guy, that in quotes man, because he's been more than that, the Greek freak. He's even challenged himself to be better and work harder, yet somehow has already been the most valuable player in the league. That's called being a star. These two guys would know. I just get to hang out with them. Welcome to game time. Get you ready. Game one of the Eastern Conference final. We've got a ton to break down. Looking ahead to Bucks and Raptors, Casey Stern, and Detroit basketball. <laughs> Zeke, G. Hill, Hall of Famers there. I'll just kind of lead you down the hall over here. This is going to be exciting, though, because not the sexy pick, right? Everybody was on Boston on Philly. Two best teams in the East get a chance to meet. You know, er earlier they, when they – when the – when we started, these are the two teams that I picked that would be in the Eastern Conference Finals. And the reason why I picked both of them is because they had such unique players in terms of Giannis and also in terms of Kawhi. And we were just talking to Roz in the back, and, and Roz said she spent a lot of time in Toronto. And, you know, we had forgot just how great Kawhi really was because he had been off the scene for a while and how great a basketball player he really is, not only on the offensive side, but the defensive side, and just willing to step up and take the challenges. So it's good to see him back, and it's good to see Giannis ride. You know who didn't forget, G? Uh, that was Kawhi. Because the confidence, <laughs> it was there. And even though he took a lot of shots and nearly broke a record with what we saw in that Game 7, the shot was part of an efficient and dominant fourth quarter. As we look again, the arc of just finding a way to get it up and then reminding me of a former teammate of yours, G, and Allen Houston, as I watch it bounce and bounce and bounce. And down, the Bucks they watched as well and paid attention. It was crazy. That was a, you know, a heck of a bounce, man. Um, become a great player. You know, Kawhi's playing, you know, some great basketball right now that i ever seen. So, you know, to see that, you know, shot going, we got to be a little bit more locked in. He's a great player. He can score at all three levels. Um, one of the best uh, two-way players in the game right now. So um, he can hurt you in a multitude of ways. It's just about making it tough for him, making him uncomfortable every play down the floor, and uh, trying to limit, really, his touches on the ball. Team defense, you know, that's, that's the most important thing. It's not one individual guy. It's not uh, anyone that can do it by themselves. You know, we've got to uh, continue to communicate as a team, uh, rely on everybody to do their job and, and do, do very well at it. Um, guys in the help side, D, and uh, just make it tough. You know, you're not going to stop him like you said, but you can try to slow him down as much as possible. You can only hope to contain them because there are two of the best handful of players in this game. That's only a handful, that's five. Right here in Kawhi and Giannis, they do different things. We'll talk about their impact here in this series and what they've done so far. And G, let's start with Kawhi. Def and you had to defend players like this where you they're gonna try and succeed many times get into that spot. You're trying to make it as difficult and uncomfortable as you can. What's the idea of what you try and do to slow Kawhi down when he's got the ball offensively? Well, that's a tough question, and that's a tough assignment for whoever is called to, to defend him. Chris Middleton uh, has guarded him well this year, kept him at 41% from the field during the regular season, although Kawhi has taken his game now to another level in the postseason. But, you know, you, I think you have to try to make him uncomfortable. Uh, Kawhi plays at a nice easy going pace you know he never gets or seems to get rattled he gets to his spots I would try to pressure him a little bit more I felt like Philly played off of him and he could kind of just dictate and determine what and where he wanted to do or where he wanted to go uh, I, I'd, I'd imagine that you know Milwaukee has more bodies they have a little bit more experienced bodies uh, Middleton has done a good job you got to get in his space make him uncomfortable uh, and, and as they said in that film, it's, or in that, in that segment there, it's a team effort. You know, it, you got to have guys that are willing to help, guys that will be able to, you know, force them into certain positions on the floor. Uh, he's going to do a lot of ISO one-on-one -on -one basketball, a lot of hero basketball, did it the entire series against Philly. Uh, Milwaukee, though, they're going to, you know, they're going to throw different bodies at him. And they have some long, experienced defenders who I think will, will give him a different look. Ben Simmons, young player, not really called upon to be a defender, was asked to guard him, which was, was obviously a little bit unfair. And Kawhi obviously got the best of that matchup in that last series. You know, Grant, you talk about it, and Zeke, 
the difference, and look, that was in the style of game the Raptors play. Kawhi needed to do that. He had to kind of take the team on his back a bit. What Brad Stevens talked about a lot last series, and I think he's right, the three-pointers are what crush you. You know Giannis is going to get his points. But what he does is he's so efficient with when he creates that attention, finding that open man, they have taken and hit the second most amount of threes to the Rockets in both categories in all of basketball, and he's the biggest reason why, and we've seen that in the playoffs. He's the biggest reason why, and, you know, it's a it's an old-school way of playing with a new-school twist. And you always hear old school players say, you know, you want to play inside out. You want to put the ball inside and then you want to kick it out to three point shooters. And the way we started putting the ball inside, we would use a post player. We would take the ball from the outside. We throw it inside to the post player. Then he would get double team and then he would kick it out. But what Giannis does is he puts it on the floor and he drives the ball to the paint, sucking the defense in. And once the defense, pen, once the ball penetrates the paint, then he kicks it out. So it's still same rules still apply where the Bucks are playing inside out as opposed to outside in. But Giannis starts out from the point. He gets to the basket. He either dunks it or he draws two and he kicks it to those three-point shooters who are, who are spotted up on the perimeter. And Isaiah, as a, as a shooter, that's an easier shot coming oh, yeah. from a pass from... <laughs> you know, in the paint as opposed to swinging around the perimeter. Yeah, and, and it's, a, it's a much easier shot, as you said, coming from the paint. And the reason why it's easier, Grant, is because when it's coming from around the perimeter, as a defender, I haven't had to move. So your defense is only as strong as your weak side can help, mm. right? And if your weak side can help and recover, then your defense is solid. So we see a lot of challenge three-point shots being taken because the ball hasn't really penetrated the paint, drawing weak side help, so consequently they can't recover. But what Giannis does when he gets into the paint, if you don't come and help, then he's dunking on his man. <laughs> so, you know what the greatest part yeah. is, too? And, and I say this, of course, to a stalwart on the defensive end. And these, these may be the two best defensive players in the league. Yeah. Yeah. In addition to the great matchup of all the offensive things and the leadership, they may be one and two in some order as the best defenders in the game. A guy who knows a thing or two about blocking shots and scoring points. And uh, speaking of Spurs relations, uh, we know that with Kawhi and Bud. But how about uh, with watching Dad growing up and now following the footsteps and a newbie on the younger side going to come near the top of the draft for Jaron Jackson Jr., who will join us next.